Hey guys, Todd here, News River Bait and Tackle. I got an invite from my good friend Ben Ricks, wildlife biologist extraordinaire. We're gonna do a little shocking today. They're coming up here on the News River doing a little bit of herring studies, right Ben? It's the start of all of our anadromous, the migratory fish work. We start with the herring. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> we start with the herring and uh, that rolls into shad and striper work as well. So this is kind of kind of the first thing we get involved with. And then one project just kind of rolls into the day. Everybody, this is Courtney. How's it going? She is a wildlife biologist herself. She helps Ben out quite a bit. Ben's over there changing some batteries out on the boat. And she is doing, what are you doing, Courtney? I am changing the batteries in the timer on our shock box so that we're able to keep track of how much effort we're putting in uh, and how much time we're shocking the fish. Yeah, so it alternates the current on off for about uh, 60 times a second. All right, guys, we are crammed in here like some pounds at the circus. <laughs> I never knew there was so much stuff that went into shock studies. Oh, yeah. Good gracious. The boat's full, truck's full. Anyway, we're off. Uh, a little bit about electric fishing. Uh, I'm sitting on the generator here. This boat, this box here rather, is the, uh, it converts the AC current to uh, pulse and DC current. The boat itself is the negative. The booms out in front of the boat are the positive, and we are essentially birds on telephone wire. Birds on telephone wire. I'm we, I'm very excited about that. We do obviously. This is this is a little more than just a winter coat. It's a float coat. We always wear life jackets. We normally have some sort of protective eyewear. We wear lineman's gloves. Um, so just in case there is a, a short somewhere, we're still uh, still protected. Um, once we net the fish up, we put them in this big tank here. Um, we're rinsing it out right now. Uh, and uh, we'll weigh, measure the fish, work them up, and then, then set, them, set them released to uh, live their best life. Shad. You don't want it, do you? You might call it nanny shad. Nanny shad. All right, guys. Here is a blueback heron. We got three of them in this site. The alewife will have a little bit bigger eye, a little bit kind of rounder, uh, rather. Uh, head and a little bit more of a golden hue. This is a blueback heron. It's a male I'm About to get a length on it Are you ready? Yep. Okay, good uh, 231 Millimeters and its weight is 105 And then we're going to send it off. So this particular place that we had, that we come to, we've uh, we got three heron. Where he's doing his uh, measurements, his weight, checking if they're male or female, and then he lets them go. That was a big, that was a big daggone uh, bowfin. Yeah. 
He didn't like that. Fifty-three. Twenty-five. Yep. You almost feel the difference. So. She's flowing eggs. Yeah, she's flowing eggs. Check that out, guys. Pretty wild. Put her back in oh. for now. Male. guys so we just stopped here tied up to a tree Ben's gonna get some uh, surveys of what we got here we got a good little run there caught several uh, guys what we have here is a, a big heron this is one of the biggest ones I've seen in a while uh, and it is a female so this is this is a sign of good things because it's important to have these larger older females um, when we're talking about restoring a fish population. So that is a good size heron. We, we actually thought it was a, hick, a small hickory shad at first. Now Ben, what makes that uh, stand out to you as a, um, besides a hickory shad a heron? Well, the hickory shad, if you look at the face, the hickory shad has a, a jaw that protrudes out um, versus the, the, the easiest thing with a heron is that just like an American shad, the uh, top and bottom jaw meet and uh, versus the underbite that the hickory shad has. That's the easiest way to tell for me. It is uh, 315 millimeters, which is uh, just shy of 12 and a half inches. So that's a big, big pork chop right there. All right, guys, we've entered our day here on the boat. These guys have done a great job. I got the pilot of the boat. Man, she, she has been weaving in and out of trees all day, man. She does a good job. Uh, but Courtney, she, she knows a lot about this stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about how and why you do this. Yeah, so we're out here today doing our uh, herring uh, spawning ground sampling that we do annually, usually beginning in the last week of February uh, when these fish start coming up the rivers. We wait until the temperature, the water temperature is about 10 degrees uh, before we start sampling So we've been collecting them with the electroshocking boat today. Todd's been doing a great job scooping up some of the hair so we've seen. We've seen quite a bit of hair. Yeah, absolutely. And so we've been doing this uh, sampling since 2007, and that's uh, just the year before the moratorium went into uh, practice here in North Carolina. And part of our compliance with the uh, Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, uh, the federal um, people looking into herring along the whole uh, east coast is to do this annual sampling and to monitor the population um, to keep an eye on it since we do have that moratorium yeah so the moratoriums like this they do tend to take a long uh, longer time to see results but we've been monitoring for since 2007 uh, in the last two years uh, 16 17 17 and 18 really we've seen a slight increase in the abundance numbers so the abundance we're looking at is a catch per unit of effort 
which is CPUE. So that's the catch and then the amount of time that we've been shocking the water. So that's why we have the shock box. It has a timer on it. We're able to get an index for abundance that way. Um, we have seen a slight increase, but not really anywhere uh, close to our target level. So, so you're really like not getting that pinch rate. mark. You know, you, you guys are shooting for a certain amount and, and you're not at that point yet, so. No, not yet, but it's definitely uh, encouraging to see this slight increase and that's what we're hoping to see this year and then we'll continue sampling um, every year. Now, Courtney, how often do you guys do these static studies to where you're out here shocking and, and doing different things? Yeah, so our herring sampling starts, like I said, in the last week of February when those water temperatures start hitting 10 degrees. So we'll be out here um, in our annual sites every week uh, until we see herring populations start to move out. Um, and then we're also out during the week doing our occurrence surveys for river herring. So that's looking in other creeks um, along the whole noose. We're trying to get uh, current data. So presence, absence of where these herring are, what creeks they're using, what kind of habitats they're using. Um, and we're also using this new technique. It's, not, it's fairly new in the scientific world of this eDNA. Um, so we take water samples and we're able to extract herring DNA from the water samples to get a presence absence. So whether or not fish are using those creeks. No way. So we'll get, do that. Um, herring sampling goes until about mid to end of March, but that'll coincide also with our American Shad spawning ground surveys and our striper su surveys, um, which will go until basically Memorial Day, uh, beginning of June, depending on what we're seeing. And we're out on the boat almost every day. So you guys are out here pretty much every day doing these studies. I mean, this is pretty much what you guys do. Yeah, we'll be on the boat four days a week uh, until Memorial Day. And this, this is why it's so important for these guys to be out here doing what they do. Um, you know, a lot of people don't really see what happens behind the scenes. Um, ben and, and Courtney and I, we've been talking all day. This is so important and it's, it's really a cool thing that we are able to do to bring this to you guys. Um, and, and Courtney and, and Ben, they do a great job. I mean, we, we've done in and out of cypress trees all day um, just to be able to find these herons so they can do their uh, lengths, weights, and uh, you know, do potential other studies on the fish. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cool. Well, guys, thank you again for tuning in. If you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully we'll have more videos like this for information. And we'll see you next time on the water.